Hello everyone and welcome in another series on my YouTube channel. This time we're going to dive into the Docker world. Docker is an open platform for developing, shipping and running applications in so-called containers. All containers are run by a single OS kernel and this makes it super efficient in comparison to virtual machines. But instead of focusing on theory, let's actually focus on the most useful Docker commands that will help you start using Docker. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, we're gonna start off with the most basic command and that is docker dash dash help. So if you don't know how to do a certain thing, help section is always your friend. We're not going to go through each of these options here, I just want to point out that in case of doubt you should refer to help. I'm gonna clear the screen. Next we have docker run command. Basically, this command runs a container from an image. The syntax of this command requires that we provide an image name after the run verb. So you need to know in advance what is the name of the image. Normally, when we run this command, the image will be downloaded from Docker Hub. Unless you run this command already with specific image, then it would be already stored locally. So let's navigate to Docker Hub in my browser and check out some images that we'll use for download. So I'm gonna switch to my browser and we are here on a Docker Hub and I'm gonna click on Explore and there we should get a listing of available images sorted by its popularity. So you can see that the most popular are, are Postgres, uh, Ubuntu Node and so on, but I'm particularly interested in the image called Python. And so we're gonna download, uh, we're gonna run Python image first. Uh, so we need the name of it, it's very straightforward. So after the run verb, we're gonna provide the name of the image and this is gonna be Python, obviously. So uh, I had not run this command on this Docker host previously, so it went out there and it's now downloading uh, this image from Docker Hub. But what this command does as well, when it's downloaded, it will run a container based on this image but since it doesn't have any service or command uh, that could run on this container it will exit immediately and we'll see how to check if a container exited in a bit just for now just remember that container will still stay alive as long as it has some job to do whether it's running service command or a script just to recap docker run command will download and run container afterwards. But if you just want to pull an image for later use, but you don't want to run it, in other words, you want to store a certain image on the Docker host, on your Docker host, well, you can simply achieve that using Docker pull command. So let, I'm going to clear this. And we saw that there was this Ubuntu image available. So now to download this image onto our Docker host, I'm going to use Docker pull command and we provide the image name as well. So this is gonna be Ubuntu and let's wait. I believe this is substantially uh, smaller so it went super fast. So now we have Python and Ubuntu images on our, our host, but how do we actually check for available images on our Docker host? And here we go to the next command, uh, which is called Docker images. So docker images command will give us a listing of available images locally on our docker host. So we get few information here. We get the tag, we get, we get image ID, uh, we see when it was created on the docker hub and we see the size of it. All right, so um, now that we know how to download and list images, let's actually learn how to start and stop them. So I'm going to use docker run command, but this time using dash d option which runs container in background and prints its container ID. So I'm gonna say docker run dash d. And by the way, if you want to see additional options that you can use with a specific command, you can use dash dash help option. So it will give you a listing of all available options. Okay, let's clear this. I'm gonna uh, run this command uh, using dash d option. And now we need to provide the name of the image based on which we want to start our container. So this is going to be Python and I'm going to do something very simple. This is going to be, um, we're going to pass a string as a Python command. So we're going to use Python application, Python program using the C option. And in here we're going to pass 
a string as our program. So this is gonna be, we're gonna import sleep function from a time uh, class. So I'm gonna say from time import sleep and we're gonna run the sleep function. We're gonna pass 300 seconds as an argument. All right, so uh, that should do. Let's run this. We get back the container ID. And this is actually the perfect moment to learn another command, which is command that will give us a listing of running containers. So to check this, to check for running containers, we use docker ps command. And it will give us a listing of uh, running containers. As I said, we get back container ID, the image which was used to run this container, the command, when it was created, um, we can see the status as well, and we don't see all the details here because uh, it doesn't fit into the screen, so I'm gonna minimize this. But basically, uh, I'm gonna extend this. Basically, we get a few more, we get the ports, if any were mapped, and we get a funny arbitrary name that was uh, assigned to this container. Okay, so now that we know how to list for running containers, let's actually learn how to stop a running container. So, uh, as you've probably guessed, uh, we use docker stop command to do this. So, we can uh, take either container ID or the funny name that was assigned to it, so I'm gonna copy this, and we provide this as an argument to our docker stop command. So, uh, it will gracefully exit this container, uh, so it will take a few seconds, so let's Let's wait for a second or two. There we go. Uh, we can we get back the container name, so it means that basically uh, the container has been uh, has been stopped. So um, how do we check for that? If we run Docker ps command, we don't see any containers here because by default this docker ps command shows us only running containers. If we want to check for exited containers, we would have to use docker ps-a option. And here we can see two containers. The, um, the one at the bottom is the one that we ran uh, when docker run python command was run for the first time when the image was downloaded. So I've mentioned then that uh, when we run this command for the first time uh, using docker run it will pull an image from the docker hub and it will run this, run a container based on this image. Uh, here we have our command that we ran um, a minute ago, two minutes ago actually. So that's how we check for running an exited container. There we go. Let's clear this. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger again. And now we know how to list, Im list give a listing of images available on our Docker host. We know how to stop containers, run them. Uh, Let's actually learn right now how to run a container in an inter in a interactive mode. So this basically will allow us to have a terminal a terminal on that container. Uh, let me show you what I mean by, by that. So I'm gonna use docker run command again, but this time using i t option, i standing for uh, interactive and t for allowing uh, pseudo tty terminal. As I said, so we're gonna use Python image again, and now we want to have access to the bash, to the terminal. So uh, when we run this command, we get, you can see that we are root still, but now we are root on this container. And basically, uh, we are inside, so to speak, inside of the container. So uh, we can see, for example, on which machine we have this Python uh, container, Python uh, container based on the Python image. So we can see on uh, what is the OS that it's running on. So let's take a look at that. Uh, that should do. It's running on Debian, uh, Buster. Uh, we can check Python version. So effectively, we are we are inside the container. Uh, how do we exit out of this container? So uh, basically we use the exit command 
And now you can see that we are back on our Ubuntu Docker host. So if you run docker ps-a again, you can see that uh, we run this container and we use the bash command on it. So that's how we were able to uh, run execute commands inside of this container. Okay, so let's clear this. Uh, we know how to run a container in an interactive mode. So let's now learn how to remove containers that we no longer need. Um, so to do that, we basically use docker rm command. But we need to provide here that container ID or uh, the funny name that was assigned to it. So I'm going to say docker ps-a again, and I'm going to remove this container ID here. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to say docker rm, and we're going to provide it looks like it wasn't copied. We're going to provide this container ID. So now when we run docker ps-a again, we, to, we have only two containers left. Okay, so um, we have these containers left on our docker host, uh, but say that we, we don't want them at all, and we don't want images as well uh, on our docker host anymore because they are taking up the space, so we want to remove them. Okay, so I'm going to clear the screen. So to remove an image, instead of docker rm command, we append i to rm command and it will remove an image. So now we provide the image name. Um, let's try this out. Uh, we get the error because there was a container exited based on the image. So if we want to remove this image anyway, we need to force this. And we use dash f option to do that. So now, if we run docker images again, we have only Ubuntu. If we wanted to remove Ubuntu, we simply run docker, docker rmi command providing Ubuntu image. Here we don't have to, we don't have to provide dash f option because uh, there was no container exited or running based on that image. Okay, so now if we run docker images again, you can see that we don't have any images available. Okay, just to sum up, docker run command runs container from an image. Docker pull command downloads an image from docker hub and doesn't run it. It will stay on our docker host unless we remove it. Docker images gives us a listing of available images on our docker host, docker run d, docker run dash d, it runs a container in a detached mode. Docker run dash it will run a container in interactive mode. Uh, we use docker stop to obviously stop a container, docker rm to remove a container, and docker rmi to remove an image from our docker host. One more time, if you want to check out help, use docker dash help, or if you are interested in particular options that are that are specific for docker commands, you use docker command dash dash help. All right, that would be it when it comes to the most useful commands. Obviously, this is my opinion, and I believe that it will help you get started. It's certainly a good starting point when you're totally new to docker. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please help me by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and have a great day.